This is pre-calc 12, chapter 6.4. We're going to be looking at graphing trigonometric functions. One property of trigonometric functions is that they are cyclic, which means they repeat. And let's look at the three main trig functions, sine x, cosine x, and tangent x. And these are in radians. We have pi pi over 2, and 2 pi. So the period is equal to 2 pi. This is the length of time it takes to repeat. And if we look at cosine, we see that the period is also 2 pi. If we look at tangent, this vertical line is a vertical asymptote. And it's an NPV, so it's not in the domain. And it's also noted as a graphing error because tangent is not continuous, so it goes to positive infinity and then starts at negative infinity and continues on. We'll notice that the period of tangent is shorter. The period is equal to pi. Now, why do we have a vertical asymptote for tangent? You should recall that tangent, theta, or x, is y over x, or sine theta over cos theta. So the NPVs occur when cosine theta equals zero. Now let's look at the inverse trig functions. And again, these are in radians. So we have inverse sine x. It's also known as arc sine x. And we have inverse cos x and inverse tan x. Now remember for inverse functions, we swap the domain and range. So the domain for inverse sine is negative one to one. So we have negative one to one. And remember that's the range of sine. The domain for sine is all reals. However, we need inverse sine to be a function, so we have to limit our domain of sine in order to get a function. And we limit that from negative pi over two to pi over two. So we have negative pi over two to pi over two. And we have to limit that because if we continue the curve, now it becomes a relation. The other thing to note is that normally we want the principal angle. However, if we use the principal angle for inverse sine, if we continue the curve, we'll be up here for the principal angle. And the problem with that is, is we would not have a continuous range. So that's why we accept the negative values for inverse sine. Inverse cosine. Again, our domain is negative one to one because that's the range of cosine. Our range now goes from zero to pi. So this is in the principal angle, that makes it easy. And if we look back at cosine, we're looking at this part. This is the part that we're inverting. and inverse tangent. The range of tangent is all reals. And we're gonna do the same thing for the range for inverse tangent. We need to go from negative pi over two to pi over two. So if we look up here, we want a continuous interval. So we go from pi over two down to negative pi over two. Rather than taking this interval and this interval. We would need two separate intervals to keep it in the principal angle. 
So let's look at the unit circle for inverse trig. So the result of inverse sine is in quadrants one and four. And the result of cosine is in quadrants one and two, and one and four for inverse tan. So we need to keep this in mind when we're converting from reference angle to standard angle. Here are some example problems. Find theta in quadrant three where sine equals negative one half. Okay, that's quadrant three. And sine, remember this is our y value, negative 0.5, and we have one, and this is theta prime, because it's our reference angle. So theta prime equals pi over six. So theta equals pi plus pi over six. Okay, so that's pi and then plus that little bit. And this is seven pi over six. Using degrees, we get 30 degrees. We add 180. Then we get 210 degrees. On your calculator, you would get, we'll call this theta C calculator, we would get negative 30 degrees. Remember sine returns negative pi over two to pi over two. This means theta prime equals 30 degrees and theta equals 180 plus 30 equals 210. Here's another example. Find theta in quadrant three where cosine equals negative one half. And remember, this is the x value. So negative 0.5. And this is one. And this is theta prime. So theta prime equals pi over three. So theta equals pi plus pi over three, and that equals four pi over three. In degrees, we have 60 degrees, 180 plus 60, and that's 240 degrees. On our calculator, theta C equals 120 degrees, and theta prime equals 60, and theta equals 180 plus 60, and that's 240 again. Let's bring up the calculator, turn it on, do the mode. This time we'll go in degree mode. We enter inverse cosine of negative 0.5, it's 120. We need to figure out our reference angle, so we do 180 minus 120. And now we add 180 for our third quadrant, and we get 240. Okay, now we need to find theta in quadrant two, where tangent equals negative one. Remember, this is y over x. So we can have one and negative one, and this is theta prime. So theta prime is pi over four. Theta equals pi minus pi over four, and we get three pi over four. In degrees, we have 45. We have 180 minus 45 and we have 135 degrees. On our calculator, theta C equals negative 45 degrees. So that implies that theta prime is 45 degrees equals 180 minus 45, and that's 135 degrees again. 
And to help you convert reference angle to standard angle and back, here are the formulas using radians. And that completes this lesson.